Welcome to the Tipping Point Show. I'm Jimmy Evans. I'm so glad that you've joined me today. Now in the subscriber portion of the program today, I'm talking about two items in the news. One is Iran and this multi-front war that they're starting with Israel. You've seen these things in the news about Israel being bombed from Lebanon by Hezbollah and just all the things that are happening now on so many fronts. I'm gonna talk about Iran and their involvement in that. I'm also talking about China and the deal that they just brokered between Iran and Saudi Arabia and what that means. Also in the question and answer, I'm uh, answering questions from our subscribers, but I'm answering a question a woman is asking uh, if God promised he would never destroy the, the world again in the days of Noah, how does that fit within the book of tribula- or the book of Revelation and the tribulation, what God says that he's gonna do with the world when everything is finished? I'm also answering a question about someone is asking, how do I relate to my friends who are gay? Uh, being a Christ follower, being a believer, how do I, how do I relate to people around me uh, who are gay? And I wanna talk about that as a very important issue. And also I'm answering the question of why have the Jews always been hated? Why is there so much anti-Semitism in the world? And it really always has been since the Jews came into existence. And so I'm gonna be talking and answering questions. Those are some of the questions I'll be answering, but I wanna begin in this program. I'm talking about a timeline of events real quick of what happens when Jesus returns. First of all is the resurrection of the dead in Christ and the rapture. This is the next main prophetic event that's gonna happen in the world. Nothing else has to happen for the rapture to happen. This is 1 Thessalonians 4. This we say to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. And so the dead in Christ are gonna rise. Their bodies, are their bodies. these dead, you know, the rotten, uh, deteriorated bodies are gonna come out of the grave, supernatural, glorious, uh, incorruptible, be reunited with their spirits. And then those of us who are alive and remain, there will be a generation of saints who never die. This most, I think it's just one of the most exciting things in the world. I truly believe, because of what's happening in the world and what Bible prophecy tells us, I believe that we're a part of the generation. Many of us will never see death. I think, I think it's just the most exciting thing in the world to think there will be people who never die. Those of us who are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the clouds, in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Okay, so and the important thing there is the rapture happens in the air. It's a private event. Luke 17 says the same thing. The second coming of Matthew 24 Revelation 19, Zechariah 14 is a very public event that happens on the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem. And so it's two two completely separate events and it happens before the tribulation. The rapture happens before the tribulation. Then there's gonna be the marriage supper of the lamb and the glorious return of Jesus in us with him. The, uh, The seven years in heaven, a Jewish wedding is seven days long. We will be with Jesus marrying him for seven years at the Father's house in heaven at the end of that time, we return with them. Now this is Revelation 19. This talks about the marriage supper of the Lamb. It says, and I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude as the sound of many waters and as the, uh, and as the sound of mighty thundering saying, hallelujah. For the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife, that's consummated. This Now we're not the bride anymore, we're the wife. His wife has made herself ready and, it, and to her, it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. So remember though, the fine linen, because this is the second coming. Okay, this is Revelation 19 again. We have married Jesus. The presentation happens in Revelation 19. We are presented now as the wife of Jesus. Here's the second coming. I saw heaven open, behold a white horse, and he who sat on him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood and his name is called the word of God. And the armies in heaven, now this is us, the armies in heaven clothed in fine linen. This is the bride of Jesus. This is the wife of Jesus. This is the church. White and clean followed him on white horses. Out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should strike the nations and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God, and he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So this is the second coming. So Jesus comes, 
and we marry him for the seven years. The seven years on the earth in Revelation 6 are called the wrath of the Lamb, the tribulation. But in heaven, it's the marriage supper of the Lamb. Think about the difference between those in heaven that have been raptured in this glorious event that's happening in heaven and those on the earth that are going through hell on earth for seven years. It couldn't be more different. It couldn't, it couldn't be more different. And so we're gonna be in heaven marrying Jesus. Then we return to the earth with Jesus. Now I want you to notice, this is not a sweet Jesus. Okay, he, he is coming in the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God to judge the nations. Okay, so this, the age of grace ends in Revelation 19. There is no more grace. After Revelation 19, nobody else gets saved. The, the saved, everybody that's gonna get saved during the tribulation, it ends right there. This is Revelation 19. This is the second coming. I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against Jesus, who sat on the horse and against his army. That's us, the, the church. Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshiped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire with, with burning with brimstone. The rest were killed with a sword which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse and all the birds were filled with their flesh. So Jesus is gonna slay them. The false prophet, the antichrist, thrown into the uh, alive into the lake of fire. These people are losers. I'm saying this to say they're losers. When you look at the world in rebellion to God right now, it ends just like that. Jesus, just one breath out of his mouth, they're all, they're all killed. And the false prophet, the Antichrist, they're thrown in the lake of fire. This is 2 Thessalonians 2.8. Then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. So it's just the Antichrist is just no deal for Jesus. It's just no deal, no deal for us. I want you to think about something else. Now think about the panorama of this. We come out of heaven with Jesus. Jesus is leading the pack. So Jesus is up here on his horse, and we are looking literally, if you're a part of the church, think about it, we're all coming out of heaven as the wife of Jesus with total authority to rule over the earth with a rod of iron. We're coming down out of heaven, Jesus is in the front, and we're watching him slay everyone who came against Israel and Jerusalem and him and throw, and, and we will see the Antichrist, the false prophet, thrown in the lake of fire. Jesus slays him with the breath of his mouth. Think about that for just a minute. It's going to be the most incredible thing that you can possibly imagine. We can't imagine it, honestly. This is Revelation 20. And this is now talking, and this is going in our timeline now. This is talking about the millennial rule of Christ. I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand, he laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. He cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. I saw thrones and they sat on them and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshiped the beast or his image had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. They're a part of the church. Now, there's gonna be a lot of people saved during the tribulation who won't worship the Antichrist. Many of those will be beheaded. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power. But they shall be, listen, priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him for a thousand years. Priests and kings that reign for a thousand years. When the thousand years have expired, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle whose number is as the sand of the sea. They went up on the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints, that's us, and the beloved city that's in Jerusalem. And fire came down from heaven, from God out of heaven and devoured them. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire. So this is, this is the final chapter of this age, okay, the end of the millennium. And it says the, the nations in rebellion, Satan was loosed from the bottomless pit after the thousand years. He led the nations in rebellion to God and they tried to kill us. And they tried to kill Jesus. And this is the end of human history as, as we know at the end of this age. And so at that point, Jesus you know, uh, uh, destroys them, throws uh, Satan in the lake of fire uh, and throws him into hell. Now, uh, this, by the way, the next thing is the, is the great white throne judgment that takes place. Everybody in the great white throne judgment 
goes to hell. This, these are people who have lived for all times that rejected God. One great way to prepare yourself for the coming of the Lord is to experience where he walked. Pastor Ed Young and I are taking a group on a tour of Israel from November 29th through December the 8th, 2023. At every stop, we'll be telling you about the great things that God has done. But even more, you can experience what God is doing right now. Every time we've experienced this trip, God has revealed himself to us in new ways, and he's going to do the same for you. Sign up for this trip right now by going to endtimes.com. There's a link on the homepage that will give you all the information you need to become a part of this amazing trip. Sign up today. So God is not a socialist. Um, when uh, Jesus said, don't lap your treasures on earth, lap your treasures in heaven, where uh, a thief doesn't break in his steel and moth doesn't destroy. And so uh, we can't take it with us, but we can send it on ahead. And there are people who live their lives for God. See, we're, we're saved by grace, but we're judged by our works. Revelation 22, Jesus said, I'm coming quickly to give every man according to his works. And so we're, we're saved by grace, only by grace do we make it to heaven. But our works are, are judged and we're rewarded based on our works. Now, this is what I'm saying. The authority that we have on the earth during a millennium is based on how we lived our life on the earth. And here's the parable, Luke chapter 19. As they heard these things, he spoke another parable because he was near Jerusalem and because they thought the kingdom of God would appear immediately. He said, a, cer a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. So he called 10 of his servants, delivered to them 10 minas and said to them, do business till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a delegation after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. And so it was that when he returned, having received the kingdom, he then commanded these servants to whom he had given the money to be called to him, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. The first came saying, Master, your mina has earned 10 minas. Notice this. He said to him, well done, good servant, because you were faithful in very little, have authority over 10 cities. And the second man came saying, Master, your mina has earned five minas. Likewise, he said to him, you also be over five cities. Then another came saying, Master, here's your mina, which I've kept put away in a handkerchief. I feared you because you're an austere man. You collect what you did not deposit and reap what you did not sow. And he said to him, out of your own mouth, I will judge you, you wicked servant. You knew that I was an austere man collecting what I did not deposit and reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you not put my money in the bank that at my coming I might have collected it with interest? And he said to those who stood by, take the mina from him and give it to him who has 10 minas. But they said to him, master, he has 10 minas. I say to you that to everyone who has more will be given. And from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. But bring here those enemies of mine who did not want me to reign over them and slay them before me. Now, this is a this is Jesus. This is this is a parable that Jesus told. And he said, there's a man who went on a far journey and he called his his, uh, you know, people to him and he gave him 10 minutes, everybody 10 minutes. So everybody's got something you no one can say God hadn't given him anything. So he gave him 10 minutes, went on his journey. And, and they said, we don't want that guy right, ruling over us. But he came back and he called into account the people that he'd given the, the minas to. And this guy walks up to him and said, Master, you gave me 10 minas and I, I took those 10 minas seriously. I knew it was a stewardship, okay? And I uh, deposited that and I earned money with it. And here's 10 more minas. And the master said, okay, listen, you were faithful in a very little thing that I gave to you. You're gonna be ruler over 10 cities. The man came up and said, Master, your minas made five minas more. He said, I'm gonna make you rule over five cities. Then the guy came up and said, I don't like you. I don't, I don't trust you. I think you're a bad guy. I didn't wanna waste my life serving somebody like you. And here, you can have back what you had. And the master said, you take that mina away from that man and you give it to the man with 10 minas, okay? So here's what I'm trying to say to you. There are people in this world that are very rich and very powerful have a tremendous amount of civil authority, spiritual authority, whatever they have in this world. But they're not using their life for God. They're not living for God. And let me say, I'm just talking about helping people, having a Bible study, sharing, just living your life to share Jesus with others as much as you can, uh, going to church, giving to your church, giving to ministries that reach people uh, for Jesus. Just simple things like that. Just, just being kind-hearted in the name of Jesus. Jesus said, if you give a cup of cold water to one of these little ones, you won't lose your reward. I think for, for some people, they think, well, I've, I've got to 
you know, I've got to save a nation or I've got to, you know, move to China or something to, for God to notice me and for me to get rewarded. No, you don't. All you have to do is take what God has given you and use it for the Lord. And one day in judgment, see, God is not a socialist. And I believe this based on Jesus' parable. Um, here's what I believe. Everyone in heaven's a winner. Everyone who is a part of the wife of Jesus has authority. There's never gonna be any jealousy or low self-esteem or anything like that shame when we're with Jesus, okay? But I do believe that when authority is being meted out during the millennial rule, that Jesus will come up to us and say, Jimmy, uh, I gave you a certain amount of minas. Uh, you, you did good with those minas. I'm gonna make you ruler over whatever you know, whatever it might be, this geographic area, okay? And he's gonna do that with all of us. And I think some people will, I don't know, there may be some people like Billy Graham or someone like that. He may be given authority over in the United States of America, what used to be the United States of America or something like that. There may be other people that they just didn't live their lives. They were Christians, but they really didn't do anything for Jesus. They didn't do anything much for other people. And they're gonna to get to heaven. They're gonna be a part of the body of Christ. And, and they may have, authority over somebody, but it's just not gonna be as much. They'll have authority. Everyone in heaven is a winner. Everyone who is uh, there during the uh, the millennium is gonna be ruling and reigning with Jesus and happy about it and excited about it and doing a fantastic job. There won't be anybody who feels left out, but it matters what we do on this earth. That's what I'm trying to say. It matters what we do on this earth. It matters how we live our life. We have authority here on this earth over the devil, okay? But there, we're gonna have unlimited authority to rule and reign the earth with Jesus for a thousand years. But some of us will be given more authority than others. And I say to you, it doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter if you don't have a you know TV show or a church pulpit or something like that, or you're not a missionary out saving lives in you know, the far corners of the world. It matters that where you are right now, you're just simply obedient to what Jesus is telling you to do. Loving people, loving God, doing good for people, being kind to people, being forgiving and gracious, being generous and things like that. You'd be, you'd be surprised. I think we'll be shocked when Jesus said, if you give a cup of cold water to one of these little ones, you won't lose your reward. I think we'll be shocked when we get to heaven. The fabulous rewards that wait us there for the tiny little things that we don't even think about here, okay? G giving a waiter or a waitress just a little extra tip just to encourage them, something like that. So I say to you, when Jesus returns, we get back all of our authority. We will rule and reign with Jesus during the millennium, but also through all of eternity. We read the scripture there in Revelation 22, which is the last chapter in the Bible. We are going to rule and reign with Jesus for all of eternity. It is going to be unbelievable, unbelievably exciting. And Jesus just simply said, when, when things are getting tough on the earth, when you, when you see the spirit of the Antichrist in the world, the way we see it right now, don't get down. Remember, in the twinkling of an eye, you're gonna be redeemed. And that means you're gonna get back what you lost. In our case, we're gonna get back what Adam and Eve lost, plus a bunch. And so the way we live in this world matters, and it's about to be over. We're about to see the return of Jesus and our redemption, and that's, that's encouraging to me. Thanks for joining me today for our free Tipping Point show. In today's endtimes.com subscriber portion, I'm talking about Israel and this China broker deal between Iran and Saudi Arabia. It's a big deal. I'm going to be talking about the significance of that. I'm also talking about how Iran is trying to stir up this multi-front war against Israel and how that's happening right now in the news, how they're bombing Israel and trying to stir up.